Today, we peel back the layers to the rise of beta motorcycles. This is an unfiltered exploration into how beta has not only survived, but thrived in the unforgiving world of motorcycle manufacturing. Through war, recession, disaster setbacks, and costly lessons, this is a brand that has weathered the storms. Buckle up, get your boots on, we're going on a ride down history lane to find out how did beta motorcycles survive the test of time. First, we're going to travel back in time into 1885 with Eduardo Bianchi, a 21-year-old medical instrument maker, started his bicycle manufacturing business in a small shop in Milan. Then in 1897, tests began on a bicycle with an auxiliary motor. A De Dion Bouton built-in motor was mounted in front of his bicycle handlebars and it drove the front wheels. Then in 1910, Bianchi built a 498cc single piston engine that was very successful and established the Bianchi motorcycle name. Throughout the next 36 years, Eduardo would create numerous different variants and motorized mounted bicycles until his passing in 1946. With Eduardo gone, this left the company to be passed down to his son Giuseppe. Then fast forward to 1948 and Giuseppe's son Enzo had met Arrigo Tosi while he was on military service and he ended up marrying his sister Elda and they all decided to work together on a company. Now during the second world war, motorcycles were being used as a easier means of transportation that were much more affordable to the everyday consumer. So in 1948, they started focusing on their two stroke street bikes and throughout the 19 1950s and the 1960s, the company began development and production of their off-road motorcycles. But this wouldn't come without its own complications. Following the World War II recession, in the late 50s and into the early 60s, consumers now had money to buy cars. This would be the start of the dark days for motorcycle manufacturers. Many manufacturers were driven to bankruptcy, but fortunately for Beta, they were able to persevere with their mopeds. Being only 50 cc's, they don't require a license and they became popular with teenagers looking for some wheels to get around town. Unfortunately, they still had one more slice of bad luck coming their way. The historic but now obsolete factory in Villa Bellaria was abandoned and the company moved to Osmanaro. Then shortly after, in 1966, a terrible flood raged through the Beta headquarters. Shaken but still determined, the company was able to manage to get back onto its feet. Then in 1967, they would release their first motocross off-road dirt bike known as the XC100, which was known for having its immaculate handling capabilities, and this would lay the foundation for what's to come. Now throughout the 70s with the emergence of the off-road sector, Beta began to specialize more and more in the productions of their off-road vehicles, and they were able to pick up three young prodigies who were going to be able to take them to their early victories. Jim Pomeroy, Gilbert DeRuver, and Italian rider Ivano Basson. And all throughout the 70s, they came out with 15 different models of bikes. Throughout the 80s, motocross was dominated by the big four Japanese companies, Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, and Suzuki. And in the early to mid 80s, Beta took this as an opportunity to hone their efforts on building top of the line trials bikes. In 1983, they launched their first trials model, the TR240, followed by the TR32, TR33, and most notably, the TR34 in their respective years following. They quickly became one of the leading manufacturers using their in-house designed engines. It was a milestone in the history of Beta when Lapo Bianchi joined the firm. Throughout the 90s, the entire production and administrative structure was updated with the aim of increasing its presence abroad while tech technical and commercial alliances were strengthened. With the World Trials Championship won by the great Jordi Terras, ranked second most successful trials rider at the time, and three consecutive world titles awarded to Dougie Lampkin for the years of 97, 98, and 99, titling him the most successful trials rider of the century. There was continuing success in trials competitions, which had now become the new frontier for the company. After their success of the 90s, they wanted to shift their focus back into the enduro market. In 2004, Beta partnered up with KTM and Suzuki to be able to produce a four-stroke enduro bike to further develop their business to the far-reaching foreign markets. Then, in 2009, we saw the introduction to what we know now as the Race Edition models. The Race Editions now included upgrades such as titanium exhaust, Marzocchi closed cartridge forks, billet triple clamps, and a carbon fiber skid plate. Starting in 2010, Beta started producing their first generations of in-house designed four-stroke carbureted motors and the sales of enduro bikes were increasing worldwide. Beta was now producing all of its two and four-stroke engines in-house. The company's great commitment to sport brought more world championship wins including the manufacturer's title which was even more prestigious and which the company had never won before. The close involvement with motorcycle racing led to the victory of seven trials outdoor world championships, six trials indoor world championships, seven European championships, and over 100 national championships all around the world. And there you have it. Beta isn't just a brand, it's a testament to the spirit of every rider who craves the thrill of the untamed. 
tamed. If you've caught the beta bug, hit that like button, share your dirt biking stories in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more off-road adventures.